In this video, I shoot a spooky Halloween scene in my small home studio. Hello, I'm Gavin Hoey and you're watching Adorama TV, brought to you by Adorama, the camera store that's got everything for us photographers. With Halloween right round the corner, I thought now was a great time to do a spooky shoot in my small home studio. And I know this doesn't look much, but trust me, with a little bit of work and a great model, this should come together to make a fantastic Halloween scene. So what have I got in my small studio? Let's have a look round the back. Right at the back here, I've got a stretched out piece of fabric. The smoother you can get your background, the more you'll feel that it just goes on forever in the final shot. In front of that, I've got some, well, they're just branches and twigs and things out the garden. They don't look much now, it's the lighting that will make a difference. For the lighting, I'm using a Flashpoint Evolve 200 and a couple of Flashpoint speed lights. And I'll walk you through each of the lights as we go through this video. All we need now is a great model and we can get shooting. So to help me out with the shoot today, it's great to have Kerry back in the studio. Now Kerry, you're not looking very Halloween-like at the moment, so do you want to go off and get changed? And uh, we'll get ready for the Halloween shoot. Oh, there you go. That's much more Halloween-like. Brilliant. Well done, Kerry. Let's start with the background for this shoot. So we've got these sticks here and flying way overhead on the boom arm is a light that is just pointing at the background. Now this is going to add an atmospheric light and I'm going to start with that and see how it looks. So let's take a shot with that light. Here we go. So you can see the effect of that light. It lights the grey background and it gives a silhouette of these branches. Now you'll notice I haven't mentioned the strength of that light because, well, it's up to you. This is one of those techniques where you're going to take some pictures, review and adjust as you go. For me, that looks just a little bit too bright. So I'm going to bring the power down by two stops, which I can do using the remote control here. And I'll take the same shot again. Here we go. So that has a much darker, moodier feel, which I kind of like. But you'll notice the colours, well, they're not really very Halloween, they're not very night-like. So what I'm going to do is change the white balance in the camera to a deliberately cold custom white balance. So I'm going to dial in a custom white balance of 3500K. Let's take that shot and see how it's different. So straight away you can see how much colder that feels. Simply changing the white balance on the camera adds to the atmosphere of the shot. Definitely makes it feel a bit more Halloween-like. Now at the moment Kerry is kind of disappearing into the background. She is a silhouette, so we have to put some light on Kerry to bring her into the shot. And I'm going to do it with two lights. You could do it with one, but I'm going to use this one first as a small separation light. So this is just my standard speed light, it's on its lowest possible power and I'm just going to pop it out of frame and just behind Kerry. Now the reason I want it behind is it will add a nice little rim light around the outside but also I want it to light this way rather than that way because if we light towards the sticks then we would put light on them and they wouldn't be a silhouette anymore. So let's try this. As you can see, that just adds a little touch of light over her shoulder and lifts that picture really well. Now, of course, we could actually use this as the two lights for this shoot. All we'd need to do is ask Kerry to look towards that light. So Kerry, can you just turn towards that light? That's great. Fantastic. A little bit more round for me. Superb. And that looks great just as a simple profile shot. So at the moment, when Kerry's looking towards the camera, her face is really dark in silhouette still. And that's a shame because she spent ages in makeup getting this fantastic look sorted out. And we need to see that in the photos. That's where this key light comes in. This one is going to be the light that is on Kerry's face. But where I put it is really important. Now, if I have it spun around in my usual lighting position like that, then, well, the light's going to hit Kerry's face, but also the twigs behind, which means they won't be a silhouette anymore. So I need to make sure that I angle the light away, feather it away from the background and that I don't have it so close that it appears in the viewfinder on the shot. So something hopefully around about there is good. Now again, I could meter this, but we've got all sorts of lights going on here and this is one of those shoots where if you take the shot and it looks right, it is right. So let's see what we get. Here we go, Kerry. 
So at the moment the light's on a fairly low power and to my eye that's just a little underexposed. So I'm going to turn up that key light power by a couple of stops and I'll do the same shot again. So that's lovely, but the whole shot is really blue. And if that's something that bothers you, then you need something like this, a piece of orange gel. So I'm gonna put the orange gel up inside of the softbox, completely covering the bulb, and that's gonna change the color that hits Kerry, but not the color of the background. And as you can see, Kerry's face has a little bit more color on it now. Remember when you add a gel to your light, it might affect the power of that light. So have a look at your pictures and adjust accordingly. The only thing missing from this shot is something in the foreground. We've got a great background, we've got a great model, and this branch is gonna become the foreground. Now I've popped it on this side because what should happen is the lights from this side will come across and just give us a little bit of rim lighting just so this doesn't become a complete silhouette. Yes, I know I wanted the back to be silhouette, but this, it just needs a little bit of edge lighting. So let's have a look and see how this adds to the scene. So everything is now set. The last thing to complete this Halloween look that we need is, of course, smoke. Now, smoke, once you add it into your set, you can't remove it very easily. So make sure you've got everything set and everybody's ready before you hit that button. Kerry, are you ready? Okay. The art with smoke is a little at a time. That's as little as I can add. Let's take some shots. Absolutely fantastic. So that was great fun. Kerry looks amazing. The photos on the camera look great, but there's always a bit of room for Photoshop. So let's get one of these into Photoshop and we'll do that right now. Although I try and get everything right in camera as much as I can at the shooting stage, occasionally things don't go to plan. And in this case, I really wasn't happy with the quality of the smoke. So I'm gonna show you how to add smoke to your Halloween pictures from scratch. Now to do it, you're gonna need some smoke textures. And I've got some free ones over on my blog, so head over to www.gavtrain.com and search for smoke or use the link in the description below. Then download the smoke textures, unzip them, and you're gonna end up with half a dozen free smoke textures. Here we go. So I'm gonna add those onto this picture here. And well, let's go grab one and do it. So let's get one here. I'm gonna go with number two, I think, first of all. Let's open that one up. And then to add it in, I'm just gonna to go to select and all, cross to edit and copy. I can close that down and go back to edit and choose paste. Now, when I paste it on, it's too small and it's in the wrong place. I want this one to go down the bottom. And to do that, I'm just gonna use a bit of edit Free transform. Free transform allows me to stretch out the sides so it actually fills the entire screen. And also I can drag it around and, and pop it down here somewhere. I reckon about there looks good. Click on the tick or press enter when you're happy. Now to blend that layer in with the original image, I'm gonna go to the layers panel and change the blending mode from normal to screen. Now that looks okay, but the, the color's not quite right. We'll deal with that in a second. Let's go and add a bit more smoke in whilst we're on a roll. I'm gonna get number one smoke and do exactly the same thing. Select and all, edit and copy, close it down, and then back to edit and paste. We'll use a bit of free transform, edit, free transform, and we'll just move this around a little bit and kind of stretch it out. Let's grab a handle, yeah, that looks pretty good. Okay, so click on the tick or press enter and change the layer blending mode to screen. Alrighty, so I'm happy with that, but the color of the smoke is wrong. Now remember, in the photography stage, I added a blue color by changing the white balance, but the smoke we've added in, well, that's white and it doesn't quite fit. So we need to add some color and we can do that really easily. Now I could use adjustment layers or I can simply go to image, adjustments and hue saturation. Find the box that says colorize. 
When you find the box that says colorize, put a, a tick in that. That's gonna add some color to your smoke. And then you can just change the color by moving the hue. I reckon something in the low 200s looks pretty good, especially if I add a little less saturation. That looks excellent. Okay, that's one done. I just need to go to the other layer, click it to make it active, and then repeat the process, image, adjustments, hue saturation. Find the colorize box and tick it. Note it might not be the same hue because of course it's in a, a different part of the picture. So, you know, that's, that's fine to have something slightly different. As long as it looks right, it is right. And there you go. There is my smoke filled Halloween picture completed. It just goes to show with a few twigs from the garden and a little bit of smoke, a great model and a couple of hours in makeup, you can create fantastic Halloween scenes even in a small home studio. Now, if you've enjoyed this video or you're gonna do a Halloween shoot of your own, don't forget to leave me a comment below. And if you wanna see more videos from myself and the other amazing presenters right here on Adorama TV, you've gotta click on that subscribe button. I'm Gavin Hoey, thanks for watching.